Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to state Hess's law. You should then be able to construct enthalpy cycles from standard enthalpy changes of formation. Now I should point out that some students find this to be a tricky topic, but it is easier than it looks once you get the idea. We're going to start by looking at Hess's law. I'm showing you here a reaction in which chemical A is converted to chemical C, and we've measured the enthalpy change of this reaction. Imagine that chemical A could also be converted to chemical B, and then chemical B could be converted to chemical C, like this. And again, we've measured the enthalpy changes for these reactions. Hess's law states that if a reaction can be carried out by two different pathways, then the total enthalpy change for these two pathways will be the same, provided that the starting and final conditions are the same for both pathways. So in this reaction, we have two different pathways to make product C. We can either go via reaction 1, or we can go via reaction 2 plus reaction 3. Now because both pathways start with chemical A and end with chemical C, this means that Hess's law applies. So what this means is that the enthalpy change for reaction 1 will be the same as the enthalpy change for reaction 2 plus the enthalpy change for reaction 3. Scientists call this an enthalpy cycle or a thermochemical cycle. So why are enthalpy cycles useful? Well, imagine that we cannot measure the enthalpy change of a reaction. For example, some reactions simply do not take place under normal conditions. If we can find an alternative pathway going from reactants to products, then we can measure the enthalpy changes of these reactions and then apply Hess's law to work out the enthalpy change that we need. Now when you're answering questions using Hess's law, you'll be provided with data in the question. And the two most common types of data are standard enthalpy change of formation and standard enthalpy change of combustion. In this video, we're looking at enthalpy cycles which use standard enthalpy change of formation. We saw standard enthalpy change of formation in the video on standard enthalpy changes. Here's the definition. The standard enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements under standard conditions, with all of the chemicals in their standard states. I'm showing you a typical question here. This shows the reaction between methane and chlorine to make chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. We're going to calculate the standard enthalpy change of reaction using the standard enthalpy change of formation data provided. Now one thing to notice is that the standard enthalpy change of formation of chlorine is zero. That's because chlorine is an element, not a compound, and standard enthalpy change of formation only applies to compounds. So the first thing we need to do is write down all of the elements involved. We've got one atom of carbon, so I'll write that at the bottom. And remember that the standard state of carbon is a solid. We then have four atoms of hydrogen. Now at this point you need to be careful. You might be tempted to write 4H like this, but this is incorrect. The standard state of hydrogen is the hydrogen molecule H2. So we need to write 2H2, which contains four hydrogen atoms. We also have two atoms of chlorine, so we write the chlorine molecule Cl2. OK, so we can use all of these elements to make both the reactants and the products for the reaction that we're interested in. Now a key point is that for enthalpy cycles like this, when you're using standard enthalpy change of formation data, the arrows point upwards. OK, we can now fill in the data that we've been given. The standard enthalpy change of formation of methane is minus 74.9 kilojoules per mole. The standard enthalpy change of formation of chloromethane is minus 83.7 kilojoules per mole. And finally, the standard enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen chloride is minus 92.3 kilojoules per mole. OK. Now we need to consider the direction of the arrows. We want to go from the reactants to the products, in other words the direction I'm showing here. However, as you can see the left hand white arrow is pointing in the wrong direction. This means that when we do the calculation, we need to reverse the sign for the standard enthalpy change of formation of methane. OK, so now we can do the final calculation. The total standard enthalpy change of formation for the right hand side is minus 176 kilojoules per mole. Therefore, the standard enthalpy change of reaction will be plus 74.9 kilojoules per mole plus minus 176 kilojoules per mole. 
This gives us a final answer of minus 101.1 kilojoules per mole. In the next video, I'll give you some questions to try yourself.